Hello and welcome to another Knitting Pod. I am Lena and I am so glad to be spending some time with you. If you are returning, you might know that I did not tape last week, so I'm extra excited to spend time with you today. Um, it is April. I don't know how that is possible, but it is. And wherever you are and whatever the season you are in, I hope you are enjoying it. I am absolutely thrilled to have longer days and brighter sunshine. And it's just, it's been really just a mood lifter. So I am in a super duper mood and I'm excited to talk about knitting and um, life and all that good stuff with you. So let's jump right in. What is on my needles? Let's first start with the mystery knit along. 12 birds or 24 birds? You had an embarrassment of riches if you're joining two options for this Helen Stewart mystery knit along. And I have to say, I am so impressed by her being able to pivot so quickly by the feedback that she was getting. So um, this mystery knit along started March 21st and it was quickly uh, shared that it was going to be a round shawl. And I think a lot of us were like, round shawl, like what does that mean? It means exactly what you think it, what it sounds like. It was a circular shawl. And I just think I was ready to do it. In fact, my last episode two weeks ago, I showed you my cast on. And then I was pretty much, I think I was in the middle of clue two, possibly, or at the end of clue one, I don't remember. But when I was on spring break, I saw her email update saying, you know, she had gotten a lot of feedback that people weren't thrilled about um, a completely circular shawl. And so she was releasing a half circle um, to go with it called 12 birds, which I thought was so cute. And honestly, just as a designer, just really, really consider it to, um, because look, when you're in a mystery knit along, you are seeding all your artistic, you know, preferences to the designer. So I was up for it. It's fun to try something new, but after I gave it some thought, because I didn't take my mystery knit along along on spring break, I gave it a lot of thought and I talked to my friend Jessica about it and she kind of made a point that the yarn I was using, which is singles silk, like here's a skein of what I was using. It's the farmer's daughter fibers in their foxy lady base. It is a single ply silk merino blend. So I was thinking if it was gonna be a circular shawl, I would use it more like a throw, just on the couch or something. But she reminded me that singles are delicate and it might not hold up as well as I was hoping with that kind of wear. So that really decided it for me. I decided to do the circular version. I mean, the half circle version. The other thing I was a little bit bummed about was that if I had known I was gonna do the half circular version, I would not have likely bought the four full skeins of yarn I did because the quantities to make a four color uh, half circle shawl was just so much less. So then once I decided I was going to do the modified version because I would use it more, um, then the question became, was I going to dig into all four skeins because it used like less than half of each full skein. So then you're left with these half skeins and I have found that to be really challenging in my knitting life. Um, it's just hard because even if I want to make another shawl, say I want to use these four skeins for Stephen West's mystery knit along in October, I don't know that this is exactly the amount he'll be using. So it's just, it sucks to have a bunch of half skeins. However, my heart was set on watching these colors interplay. So after a lot of thought, I decided, what the heck, I am just going to go ahead and use um, all four colors as planned because I thought it would just make me happier in the long run. I am trying to find this so that I can show you. Too much talking, not enough showing, right? That is the story of my life. 
this is what I have so far. And as usual, the lace is just all crinkled up and not too pretty to look at, but that's okay. It's not like I can do a, a block or not that I'm willing to do a block, but here, here it is. Um, I think my colors are so beautiful together. They're making me so happy. This first color, I'll just try to spread. It's so squished. I don't know how to show it to you. The first color, the bottom one is olive oil. Maybe flipping it around is easier. Then this is the green is Gary Cooper. The deep bronzy color is Mr. Pocket. And I really like how um, she's kind of done the stripes. And because I don't have a ton of contrast, it kind of just melds together. It just looks beautiful. I am so happy with it. This is the end of Clue 2. Um, I have to say, I have found the amount of knitting in each clue to be so incredibly manageable that it's shocking to me. Like, I was so behind. I cast this on on like Monday because spring break, it was crazy. And then I had to rip out the yarn. And anyway, I finished both clues in just a few days and I've been knitting on other stuff. So I really am enjoying the fact that it's not like an insane amount of knitting every week. I think that's partially because I'm doing the half moon version, half moon, half circle, semicircle, whatever. Um, it's less knitting and because it's split into six weeks, I think the clues are just more manageable. So I have been enjoying it. As far as the pattern, I think it is really beautiful. Again, it's kind of hard to show you, but it reminds me of leaves and it's very simple lace. So even if you are just being tempted to join in, I really think you could join in with the semicircle version and catch up. And if you have never done lace before so far, it is so basic. Like it is really, really easy. Even a great chance to practice reading a chart. I have to say, I have been reading the, the written out version. And one thing that I've been running into with my first clue because I didn't have a chance to print it out and I was using the screen, I kept finding myself on the wrong row and I'd get to the end of a row and only then realized that I had done like row 37 instead of row 35, so then I'd have to tink back. I did this multiple times and it drove me absolutely batty. So my solution to that was to print it out and like physically cross off each line and move my magnetic ruler on my cocoa knits board down so that there was no messing up where I was. And that, that was very, very helpful. Another problem that I ran into was yesterday or the day before yesterday, I realized I was off on one row. My stitch count was off. And then when I kind of dug a little deeper, I had like done some yarn overs. I missed something somewhere and one set of yarn overs on one leaf was shifted over. And luckily I was having lunch with my friend Jessica and she's much more, um, she's much braver, I think because she has more competence at fixing things. So she came over and like fixed my, um, my shawl real quick, which I was so grateful for because then I was right back on track and I was able to finish clue two because of that. Otherwise, I was just going to fudge it and I wasn't quite sure how I was going to manage that. So always good to have friends that are better than you at all the things you strive to do. So that was extremely helpful. And the tip that she gave me was just don't worry so much about counting the stitches at the end of every row, but kind of just look and make sure at the end of every row, everything is lining up right, which you can totally see. Like for instance, all these yarn overs are framing that leaf motif and that's where I was off. So at the end of every row, if I just look to make sure, then I would catch the mistake on the row I was making it rather than noticing it 
several rows down, which then makes fixing it a lot more complicated. So that is what I'm doing now, is just slowing down, taking the extra 15 seconds at the end of each row to make sure I'm on track. I have to say, lace knitting I have found to be just, it's very hard, like if someone's talking to you, I can very easily be thrown off. Um, it's just one of those more focused things. So it's not a project I can take on the go. And that is something that I just have to have other things going on at the same time. And this I have to knit when I can really sit down, maybe not even be listening to anything because it's not that it's complicated. It's just very easy to get off in your counting. And if you're off one stitch, you're off. And that's not my favorite type of knitting, but I am enjoying it. It's just, I have to keep it for when I'm at home and able to focus. And that is not a lot of time. So um, I'm very happy that the portions are very manageable. Like I think Clue 3 came out yesterday and I think it's like gets you to 40% done, which is incredible. I'm so, so happy with the amount of knitting, like I said. Um, if you are doing the round version, I'm curious if you're still loving it or if you've been tempted to switch over. I think one of the things that I was sad to, um, say goodbye to when I switched over to the second version is that when you're doing in the round, there are straight knit rows and in the semicircle version, you have to purl every other row basically. And that's kind of a bummer because I love to knit way more than I love to purl, but um, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I also think just because I'm using a silk blend and metal needles, it's slippery. So you just have to be a little bit more careful, but metal needles just feel better on my hands. So I'm sticking with it. And I love my chow goo cords that are loose and stay straight. So yeah. That is the MCAL, the 12 birds is the one I'm doing. I am so glad in retrospect that I did the four color version because I'm really enjoying it. And I cannot wait in Clue 3, I get to use my Color Pop, which is this gorgeous colorway, uh, Meet Me in Atlantic City by Farmer Starter Fiber. I'm just so excited to see how this knits up because, um, it looked so different in the hank, like the non-wind up, wound up version. It just looks so different. So I'm really curious how it pans out um, knit up. So yeah, that's where I am. Please send me a little comment if you have joined in and how you're enjoying it. Mystery knit alongs are a real, I don't know. They just, the amount of excitement I feel before they start, is more than other projects just because it's so exciting to not know and just like energy around the MCAL. But then when you find out, I think sometimes we have expectations and hopes and dreams that we've built up and it's easy to be kind of disappointed by the first clue or confused or like, should I have joined in? So I think all those feelings are totally valid. I had them myself. Um, because when I was on spring break and I had already done the circle, I was just kind of like, oh, do I want to start over? But the answer was yes, and I'm really enjoying it. And um, I don't think I would have made this shawl on my own. And I love finding the beauty in something you wouldn't have instinctually picked. So I have been really enjoying it. And I love these yarns. The Foxy Lady is just, it is such a beautiful base. And the colorways are so unique and gorgeous. Like I talked about this last week, but this Mr. Pocket color, it's this bronze color. You, the light is hitting it very beautifully right now where you can see there's like literally this metallic sheen to it that's so unique and lovely. I would absolutely love to make uh, like a summer top in this. Um, I'll talk more about summer tops in a little bit, but this color particularly, just it's hard to find a dark color that still has such beautiful dimension. And I am 
in love with this color, Mr. Pocket. Um, I was actually looking at Farmer's Daughter Fibers to see if they had a thicker weight in that colorway, but I don't think they do. Um, I love her stuff. Absolutely beautiful. So anyway, okay, moving on. What else is on my needles? I am very happy to say right now I have whittled down my works in progress to three. So the MCAL, the, the Bubbles and Brio Shawl by Stephen West, which I have not touched, and I've kind of just accepted that it's going to be in hibernation right now because I really want to stay on track with this. And this is my final work in progress, the Callius Cardigan by Isabel Kramer. Hold on, I'm going to do a little switcheroo and put this stitch stopper or needle stopper back on so I can show you. Y'all, I am like this close to being done with this and I am so excited, so freaking excited. And if, if I sat down and stopped working on that for like a day, I could finish this in an afternoon, but I just, I wanna stay on track, like I said with my MCAL, but this is my second sleeve of the Callius cardigan. It's very wrinkled and sad looking right now. This is the completed first sleeve. I put it on a cord so that I could adjust the sleeve length after wet blocking, but this is it. I'm so thrilled. As you know, I started out really excited. Um, this is the really cool slip stitch ribbing on the back that I think is the star of this cardigan. To me, I've said it before about this, it looks like brioche, but it's so much easier. And then the front collar is the same slip stitch ribbing that tapers down. And then you have a stockinette panel and then some slip stitch ribbing on the bottom as well, which I thought was really a pretty pretty touch that makes it all look very cohesive. I think Isabel Kramer does such a good job of making something very simple, but absolutely beautiful through its details. Like if myself as a knitter, if I saw someone wearing this, I would absorb all that beauty of the, you know, just so well edited in terms of it would be so easy for her to go overboard on the cardigan like this and like add pockets and add this and that. But the elegance is in that beautiful thought out detail. I didn't love every minute of this knit. I just, I don't know why. I I don't think I love knitting with this yarn. Um, I don't, I don't really know why. It is the Julie Aslan Nurtured base in the colorway Do. But I think this is going to be so well loved and used. And that is so exciting for me, especially after just finishing that heirloom quilt cardigan. And I love it and I wear it plenty, but it is not just like a basic throw on and it matches everything. So I'm really looking forward to finishing this and having it as a layering piece, which is just fantastic. Like, I envision being able to wear this during travel because it's warm and I'm always cold in an airplane, but then you don't have to worry about it matching anything. And then when you're on your trip, it's gonna go with everything you took. So it's just a really great versatile cardigan. I, it's, Jessica and I were laughing about this yesterday because we went to lunch. She took me to lunch for my birthday and um, I was wearing the, what is it called? Trinigan by Andrea Maury. And she was like, oh my God, it's so cute on you in person. I've never seen you wear it. And it's like these bonker balls colors. It's like neon purple and coral. And it was so fun to knit. And I loved every second of it. But then in real life, it's like, what the hell am I going to wear this with? Like, it's just... I have grown a lot in my knitting in that I try to be more conscientious of picking yarn that is both fun and wearable. And so sometimes that sacrifices a little of that like jazz hands pizzazz when you're knitting the yarn. But anyway, long story long, I love where this is going and I've tried it on many times and it is so beautiful on, like it fits 
just like I would want it to, like the perfect amount of ease, not too much to where it's like you're swimming in it, but not like all, um, because I hate that. Um, the sleeves are just the perfect width. And I think once it's blocked and once this yarn chills and relaxes, it's going to be epic. And you get to see it next week because I will undoubtedly be done with it by next week and it will be off the blocking mats. I did fudge a lot of it. Like there were times I made mistakes and I just made do and I'm so glad I did not like rip back or fret about it. Like I didn't do the short row shaping at the bottom. I didn't follow her shaping on the sleeves. I don't know. I kind of felt like she was reducing the sleeves too tight for my liking too quickly. So I kind of just followed my instinct, which is to eat more evenly space the, um, the decreases. And I'm really glad I did because I know that's what I like. So I'm just doing that. Um, so yeah, couldn't be happier to actually wear this. And this yarn, this Julie N Asselin Nurtured Base has been in my stash for like three years a sweater's quantity of yarn and that haunts me. So I'm thrilled to have this finally used and loved into a garment that I love. This is the third thing I've tried to make with this yarn and I guess the third time's a charm because this is the end result of that and I'm very happy with it. So what else y'all? Okay. So once that is done and off the needles and blocked and on my body, the I will be very happily whittled down to two works in progress. And I, that is a really great place for me to be. I Like I said last week, I had like six works in progress and I was so unhappy with that number. And I was very thrilled when I like sat down and focused one at a time and knocked them out because that's just too many. And it was like, I had, all my needles were all in projects. I just didn't like it. It just doesn't make me happy. Some people love um, being monogamous and just focusing. I am not that person. I do like um, having different things because different projects fit into different moments of my life. For instance, loving the MCAL, but it is not Stan's knitting. Stan's knitting is a technical term for when you have to knit in the stands of a game, <laughs> which I do a lot, but it has to be mindless because you're watching the game, you're listening, you're talking to friends. It's just not like, hold on, I need to count my lace repeat, please. Like that's not gonna be, that's not gonna make you a beloved um, seatmate in the stands. So my next project is kind of a big conundrum for me. And one thing I'm really just feeling in my heart, and you guys know I am a gut-driven, feelings-driven knitter. I, I love to feel, well, not love, I must feel that sparkly excitement to like succeed at a project. Otherwise, it's just a slog and I refuse for knitting to be a slog for me because this is the space that we as a knitter should feel able to just express ourselves and love it and not feel obligated. So all that being said, I am feeling so spring driven right now. Like, you know, I love winter so much. I love the snow. I think growing up in Texas, I just find the snow so magical that I'm never sick of it. But this year, I just am so excited for longer days. Um, I think because my son's basketball practices don't even start till 7.30 on weekdays. And when it's really dark outside by then, it just makes the evening so long because then he doesn't get home till 9.30 and it's just exhausting. Now the sun is up when he's going to basketball practice and that is just makes me feel so much more energized and happy and I don't know I just I just want to like feel I want it to be sunshine all day all night I just as late as possible and that is translating into excitement for some warmer weather knits 
Um, as you can see, I am enjoying wearing my, um, what is this called? Uh-oh, what is this called? Jessica, what is this called? Because <laughs> she's knitting it right now. Um, I don't remember. What is wrong with my brain? I think I'm getting, I want to say outline tank, but no, is that right? Outline tea, yes. I think I'm having a stroke. Um, outline tea, right? And then there's the outline tank. Okay, I will put it here and stop talking. This is by Jessie May, and I love, love, love this. I didn't love making it. I've talked about this ad nauseum, so I'll just quickly say it's bottom up, and I like to get all my bodice shaping out of the way first and then just cruise, and this is the opposite. You have to do it from the bottom up and then shape all this. I was so sick of it that I didn't actually do the sleeves, but I ended up liking this um, kind of wider strap here, and so I think you could add sleeves and be happy or leave it and be happy. But I love this and I want something along this line. That's what I'm thinking right now. Um, one of the ones that I absolutely love, it is one of the first things I ever knit and it was an, an unadulterated disaster because I didn't understand gauge swatching. I just jumped in and made a garment that ended up being enormous for me. Um, I It was the outline tank. See, I'm getting confused. This is the outline T and that's the outline tank top. It is much thinner straps and then it has a similar drop stitch detail that is so pretty. Um, and it kind of is, it outlines the bottom and the, the neckline and all that. I'll pop a picture up, of course. It is such a beautiful top. And ever since I knit that first one many years ago, several years ago, maybe not many years ago, I have wanted to redo it with a proper sizing situation. So that is something I might do. It is also bottom up, but whatever. I'm not gonna fuss too much about that. A lot of like tank tops and tees are bottom up. I'm not sure why, but I think I would just have to be very mindful of making it long enough and adding length and kind of trying things on and comparing to pieces I have now. Another one that I just saw that I fell in love with that I'm I'm it's very much in this vein, but probably won't make right away because it has lace is Amy Schur's Oolong Tank. I think that's what it's called. I didn't write it down stupidly. But I encountered her in a podcast. I'll tell you why in a little bit. But she was wearing it and it was so beautiful. I believe she made it in linen quill. This is linen quill and fresh nutmeg, um, the Pearl Soho yarn. Um, but it was very similar shaping uh, of like a wider strap, but it has this beautiful lace panel in the middle and along the bottom. So pretty, you guys. I love this. I think it would be really nice for anyone looking for kind of a an elevated basic. I just don't want to do it because I don't want another lace project. Like that's not great stand knitting because again, lace. I don't want to have to have something that I have to keep track of where I am or have a written pattern with me. Um, but if you want something a little bit fancier, I think this is so pretty. And she is such a, she has not been on my radar and I've heard of her and I've seen her work published in like really, you know, Pom Pom Magazine and all sorts of different places, but I've never kind of explored her patterns on my own and I was very excited. She has so many patterns. The only thing I would say is I was a little surprised that the Oolong tank was $10.50 as a pattern and that just seems, I don't know, really pricey. And I know we're talking just the, a matter of a couple of dollars and the labor that goes into pattern writing is immense, but that still just seemed like a jump from other similar pieces. So that did give me a little pause. 
Um, and so I was kind of drawn to using something I already had in my library. Like I would totally knit this again, but I do think I'm gonna do the other version of the outline. I also have the outline raglan, I think it's called in my library. I just love, I love everything Jessie Mae does because it's so wearable and beautiful and modern. And like the other day on my actual birthday, I wore this with my heirloom quilt cardigan and I just felt so double hand knit. It was so fun. I felt so happy. So anyway, I really want a summer project. So I'm going to be very thoughtful. First, I'm gonna finish the Cal Calias, Calias cardigan and then cast on something more portable. Um, the other thing that's been on my radar, okay, pivoting actually to crochet. What? Crazy. What? Who am I? If you have been here, you know I started out as a crocheter for many, many years before I knit, but like knitting is my love language. Like my heart is made of yarn, but there's a knitting needle stuck through it. It's not a crochet hook. But I got an email from Wool, Wool and the Gang. Is that the brand? Hold on, let me see. Oh, here we go. Yes, Wool and the Gang. We're, we're starting the snoring train. I thought we were doing well. She opened her eye like this and looked at me like, woman, she's trying to sleep while you ramble. But anyway, I got an email from Wool and the Gang, the yarn pattern, yarn and pattern company. And it was for new shades in their Ra Ra Raffia yarn. And the new shades were absolutely breathtaking. They had this soft spring baby pink that just, oh my God. And so because I was so drawn to that color, I clicked on it and it took me to like the patterns that they recommend for that yarn. And I remembered that I have five skeins of that yarn in my stash because I had bought it years ago when I was a crocheter in the hopes of making outdoor placemats. So I had bought these colors that I'm like, now I'm like, what was I thinking? These colors are just not, <sighs> what were we thinking? Who knows? Anyway. I will show you all the colors, but the two that I'm really happy I have are these two neutrals. This is ivory white in the Ra Ra Raffia. So you can see it's literally like this weird papery texture. I'm gonna first show you all the colors and then show you where I'm going with this. And then I have this gorgeous color. I love this color. It's desert palm. It's a nice buttery neutral. And then the two, what was I thinking, are hot pink and grass green. I guess what I was thinking was using those like basic colors and then doing pops of color with this. Um, but I just, I don't know. I don't, the me of now is not like, yay, I picked great colors. So what I was really, Danny, Danny. What I was really drawn to was, what did I do? I don't know how this came about, but I found Paula Strick's um, patterns where she uses this exact yarn to make hats and bags, like summer hats and bags. And I was just so excited. You guys know, if you have been with me, that I love knitting beanies, and winter hats. I think they're just such a fun way to try out a new technique or use up a leftover skein of yarn or give a gift or have some on the go knitting or travel knitting. I think it's perfect. So I'm really feeling like the void of being in the warmer months and not being able to knit beanies and hats. So not only was it exciting to get back to some hat knitting, but just I'm gonna put up the hat. It's the Luca hat. This is such a wearable hat for me. I would wear this so much in the summer because I am a vampire and I'm always trying to protect myself from the sun. So I love a cute wide brim hat and double points because dirty hair, 
don't care, put on a hat and you're good to go. It's just a win-win. So I am super keen on casting this on. It is crocheted, which it's not my favorite, but when you do, I do prefer, you know, crocheting in the round for such things because I just, it seems like crochet is more appropriate for that kind of shaping and stuff. So I'm hoping, I don't know, because I haven't let myself even buy the pattern yet until I finish this cardigan, but I'm hoping this one desert palm would be enough to make one hat, and I think it is. Savannah, I know because I saw on the projects pages on the Ravelry that you made this. So please, please tell me if you enjoyed the process or if you think I would hate it. Um, I'm a little concerned that this yarn isn't going to be really pleasant to work with, but you don't know till you find out. So I think I'm going to try. Maybe I'll just get out a hook and try to do some a circle and see how I like working with this. Otherwise, I don't know what I'm going to do with all this yarn. It's been haunting me because there's six, five skeins of it. It's been haunting me for years. So I would love to get to make this. The other piece that was so, so beautiful was this bag. I forgot the name. It's also designed by Paula Strict. It's a beautiful, summery, kind of big tote that you could take to the pool or the beach. I feel like I would use this so much also. But just the size is so much bigger. So I think I'll go with the hat right now, but maybe you are looking for a fun summer knit that you can then use in the summer. I think that one, and I think she gives you an alternative to use uh, like cotton yarn or something if you don't have raffia. Um, because who the heck has raffia skeins sitting around other than me, apparently. Um, so yeah, those are the summery patterns that I'm kind of tossing around right now. I would love to hear anything that's, you know, lighter knitting that you're excited about. Um, as a suggestion, as I ponder, I will probably do an episode in the next couple of weeks of just a roundup of like summer knits because I myself am like wanting to line up a bunch of options before I pick. Um, that's one of my favorite parts about knitting is, you know, I've been knitting a lot of wintry heavy things and I just am, just get so excited to explore what's out there different designers like Amy Schur that wasn't on my radar at all. She's not even unknown. It's just, I have not knit her stuff. So um, it's one of my favorite things to do. So suggestions are welcome. So yeah, I think that's about it in terms of what is on my radar. Other stuff um, kind of segueing into life, but also with knitting in it. So don't despair. We're not totally leaving the realm of yarn. Um, it was my birthday on Sunday, and it was very fun. I felt like um, I was just, I am so celebrated out. I feel very lucky to be so loved, but, you know, we went on spring break, and then we had, like, a lovely, really fancy dinner with some dear friends of ours when we got back, which was such a treat because... If you have younger children, you know, it's just like my younger 20 something self, it was not a big deal to go to a fancy restaurant with only adults and have a five hour dinner um, and drink a, way too much wine and like all that stuff. But now at my age, it is the ultimate luxury and guilt free because I gave myself that gift to be like, you deserve to have an adult dinner and that was just the absolute best truly like i think the blessing of getting older is realizing the, that it's not how many friends you have like we all know this in theory but it's the connection the depth of the connection you have with your friends is so just when you're with the people that everything else falls away and you can both laugh until you pee and talk about serious stuff and all that. So anyway, long story long, that was just 
that was really the highlight of my birthday because we went to this incredible restaurant in Boulder that we'd never been to. And it was just, it was just a treat all the way around from the service to the food, to the company. It was just a real treat, a real high point. But all that to say, another lovely thing was that my parents for my birthday sent me money, which was so sweet and exciting because even though I am stone cold middle-aged 44 year old woman it's such a treat to get something like that from your parents because you feel like a kid again like ooh, money for my birthday and i get to do whatever i want with it and i don't have to like be practical or anything and i it just instantly i knew what i was going to do with it and that is I am going to get a spinning wheel. Oh my God. I literally want to stand up right now and like just work all the happy energy out because I'm so excited about this, you guys. I told you that I, a couple months ago, probably that I really want to start spinning, but I just felt too guilty to spend so much money to buy a spinning wheel. And I really, I'd never told my parents that, um, but I guess they just must have known because instead of a gift, they sent me that. And I just, I know I want to become a spinner. I know it in my heart. So I'm happy that I get to start researching and kind of experimenting with how to pick the right wheel. I do feel a lot of pressure because I don't, know which wheel to pick and there are so many out there and there's so many there's such a range of style and price and this and that and it's just what I've promised myself is not to be not to rush this process and to take it slow and try to try out as many as I can and talk to people who know and watch podcasts about this subject and that is how I ended up with that Amy Sher podcast where she was wearing that top and talking about picking her first spinning wheel. And that was very helpful, by the way. Um, if you are in the same situation, don't rush, take your time. I know it's like, I'm that kind of person that I'm so excited. I just want to jump in and start doing it now, but it's not like knitting. Like knitting you can buy, even if you spent a hundred dollars on a set of needles, it's not that big of a deal to then in two years be like, oh, those weren't the needles I should have bought. Um, very different when you spend $600 and then a year from now, like, oh, I wish I had just spent the extra money and bought the one I really wanted because I'm going to end up buying it anyway. So one of my local yarn shops, Longmont Yarn Shop, they sell spinning wheels and they sell shacked. I think that's how you say it. There are these beautiful wheels that actually are made in Boulder. And I love that. I love the idea of local vendor, local maker. And then the teacher that I took my drop spindle class from, she is a shack dealer. So my plan is to try to get in touch with her through Longmont and have her kind of walk me through the different models and maybe get to try out what feels good in my body. Um, if you have, if you are a spinner, which I know many of you are, please tell me your thoughts. Um, if you love your wheel, if you didn't love a certain wheel, I would love to know. Um, it would be so, so helpful to me and maybe would move me along a little faster because I feel intimidated by the scope of how much there is to learn and how much, how many options there are. And anyway, luckily my other friend, Sharon just bought a wheel. She bought the Ashford Kiwi three, which is a really, it's gotten great reviews. I've heard it's a great beginner's wheel. So that's definitely an option. Um, we're trying to find a time where our schedules coordinate so I can go check hers out and maybe give it a spin. Lots, lots of puns going to come out of this new craft. Um, but I am incredibly excited. Jessica's excited. She is going to come with me and fall down this rabbit hole with me. Also, um, I just, 
I feel so drawn to this next level of love for fiber because I finally feel like I have knit enough to be able to tear myself away from knitting enough to try to do something um, new. Uh, because I know the learning curve is going to be really high and that there's I'm gonna have to commit to like daily practicing before it feels second nature, but that's how it was with knitting. It took me a long time, a lot of dedication before knitting felt like my love language. It's not automatic. Um, so anyway, I am so excited about that. That is like the most exciting thing for me right now. Um, I've been reading Yarn -a Texture, Yarn -a Texture or Yarn -a Texture. I can't remember that book about spinning and it's just given me a lot of inspiration and excitement and I know that I want to do it. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I'm contemplating, right? I'm a little distracted because I don't know if her snoring is bothering you. So I'm contemplating pausing and moving her or just hurrying up and finishing because we are almost at the end. Um, why don't we just finish up? Because I feel guilty. My husband's not home and she'd be sad if I put her in his office. Um, but it's driving me crazy. I'm just gonna deal with it. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Thank you for bearing with my distraction because I don't like rushing our time together because we already missed last week and I just, anyway, I don't want it to be annoying because it's annoying to me and I feel like it'd be annoying to you. Anyway, okay, so spinning, birthday, happiness. Um, I also was going to say one thing I've realized as I've gotten older is how much I like to learn new things. I think I never thought of myself as that kind of person. And I actually really like the struggle and challenge space. I think it also just helps me feel what my kids must feel because I think as adults, it's so easy to completely stop doing anything that you find unpleasant. So like, I don't like Pilates and I don't have to do Pilates. I don't, no one's making me and I don't have to. But like my daughter doesn't love piano and I make her do it. Um, it's, I think it's nice to be reminded again of what it feels like to struggle just it keeps you feeling younger and I feel like it keeps me understanding how hard it is to go to school for them and like do things they don't want to do and when they complain about it rather than just feeling like suck it up buttercup I feel like I get it I too didn't want to sit down and practice spinning the wheel in the right direction for 30 minutes but I know there's going to be so much struggle in that and I'm really excited about that um, like I learned to ski really late and I have struggled and I love it. And it's, it's taught me to work through the difficulty and not just assume I don't like it if it was hard at the beginning, because everything's hard at the beginning. So I think I'm also going to start golfing. I know this is, if you know me in real life, um, it's comical because I was always the person that was like, oh, hell no, I'm not going to golf. Like, but I just... Again, I want to learn something new, and then that's a physical thing. And a f I love skiing with my family so much that I want a family sport, and they all golf. And I want a family sport for the warmer months. So win-win. Learn something new and have a new thing that we can do as, together as a family. So that has been my birthday week contemplation. I felt... Like I really realized that in a real way. And I also just realized, like I said, at this age, you're just so lucky to have people you truly connect with. And you're not just friends because you're circumstantial friends, you know, like Jessica, you know how dear she is to me. And we went out for lunch yesterday for my birthday and she got me a beautiful gift. And one of the things that was Part of my gift, uh oh, I screwed up the zipper and it got stuck. Okay, hold on. It was this incredible 
pouch that she knit, that she knit, that she sewed. It's so cool. It has this zipper and then you're going to freak out. This is so cool. Check it. Oh my gosh. How cool is that? I just, she had made one for herself and I had freaked out that I loved it. And of course she made me one. And I just think it's the coolest thing ever. Like how useful is this? It's, it zips up into this adorable little rectangle and then you have all your stuff because so so much of the time I need a stitch marker or I need to grab my crochet hook and the pouch I have is great but I envision this as being just like a place where this sits next to me and it's open so I'm not constantly like messing with it and anyway just when someone makes you something it just makes you feel so loved. So I felt very loved. Thank you, Jessica. I just have to show you this gorgeous fabric up close because it is magical and so springy. And then I thought the detail of adding these cute little um, quilting, whatever these are, are just so cute. My daughter was obsessed. Kaya, my daughter, loves sewing. Like, she loves sewing the way I love knitting. And so now she wants Jessica to teach her how to make this. But this looks difficult. I'm not going to lie. I am not a sewist. I am terrible at sewing. So I find it absolutely incredible that Jessica is so talented, not only at knitting, but also sewing and, like, everything else. But anyway, I had to share this. I will ask her for the pattern if you, because I know a lot of you probably sew and you probably want to make yourself one because it's so cool. I will find out the pattern for you. Um, Yeah, I think that's rounding the end of all the things. I mean, it sucks when I miss a week because there's so many conversations I have with you in my head. But then by the two week mark, it's like... I don't know, life just moves so quickly and I feel like so many things I wanted to share with you have fallen out of my head now. But anyway, such is life. Life gets in the way of podcasting sometimes. Um, I did finish the book, James by Percival Everett. <sighs> you guys, it was so worth reading. And the reason I say worth reading was I did struggle I've talked to you guys about this before, but I really struggle to read books set during slavery from the slave perspective. I just, it rips me apart. I feel just disillusioned and jaded and I feel like I lose my faith in humanity. So it's a really hard thing to bring myself to because then I have to work myself out of that feeling. However, this book was so beautiful and I loved the end and I felt lifted. Like I felt like my spirit lifted at the end. And it was one of those books that was so fully absorbing and emotional and you're so in love with the character that it's just so hard to read anything else after that. Like I had to, I finished it many days ago and normally I am like turn around and start something else, but I haven't because I just have to let it like sit in my heart and just kind of marinate. And it was an absolutely beautiful read. I loved every second of it. I thought it was so well done in that it's very short actually. I think it was, Anyway, it was short. It could have been dragged out, but I think by being more concise and precise, he just nails it. It's like it hits so perfectly. It's definitely on my top. I, I keep telling you what's going to be at the top of my list for the end of the year, and then you won't be surprised, but I can't help but say it. it is on my list of all-time favorites. And I can't help but notice that... Maybe it's a trend in the literary world right now, but there are so many classic stories being retold right now. I was thinking about it. So James is um, Huckleberry Finn, the Mark Twain book, The Adventures of Huck Finn, retold. 
Then Demon Copperhead was David Copperfield retold. Hello Beautiful was Little Women retold. Julia was 1984 retold. It's just so crazy. This I feel like there's this, this moment that writers are taking old stories and spinning them into something different or new or fresh. And I am so here for it. I love, love, love it. I think it's just so fun to revisit something from a new perspective, from a new writer's perspective. And anyway, I just, I loved it. And I seem to love all those books. Demon Copperhead, Hello Beautiful. I didn't finish Julia. I didn't love it. But James is up there with the other two. So highly recommend. I am very excited because I don't know how I had never heard of Percival Everett. First of all, I wish I had another child because I think I'd name him Percival. It's the cutest name I've ever heard. And he's just so talented. I really want to read his other book. I think he's written a book called American Fiction. Is that what it's called? No, that's the movie, Erasure. I think the book he wrote was Erasure and the movie or something is American Fiction. Anyway, I'm always excited. Just like I'm excited to find a new knitwear designer, I'm excited to find a new to me author. Um, so if you have any book recs, please send them my way. I'm really struggling to follow that one up because it was so good. Um, and that's about it, you guys. Like I said, I feel like I'm not telling you stuff, but I can't remember what I'm not telling you. Um, it's been exhausting. Celebrating is exhausting. And I try to remind myself that I'm so lucky to be have so much celebrating, but I am really tired. Um, one more celebration to go this Saturday with one of my dearest friends who's also a March birthday. Um, they are coming over on Saturday and we're going to have a celebration and I am very, very excited to celebrate with her because like I said, I love her. Um, I hope your spring is off to a fabulous start. I, for one, am ready for a little freshness, a little change. Like I said, two things, three things. Tell me how you're enjoying the MCAL. Tell me if you have any warmer weather knit pattern suggestions. And then three, tell me if you have spinning wheel suggestions of any kind, whether it's spinning wheel or how you got started or any of that. I just want to know. It doesn't even have to be advice. It can just be your story. So I enjoyed this hour with you so much. I really miss you when I don't get a weekend with you because it's just, it is like I've always said, feels like a conversation and a community and I really missed it. So take care of yourself, be well, fit in your knitting time for yourself and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.